Hey, what's up, y'all? So, I, I mean, I love virtual presenting. I mean, you, I'm in California, I'm from Boston. Uh, you can do this anywhere, right? But you need to know the steps involved into virtual presenting. Let's go A to Z over the entire process of setting up a virtual appointment, making sure that client shows up to the appointment and actually closing that deal. And not just closing that deal, but making sure that client stays on the books for life because we're in this industry for residual income. Let's say you have a lead. I look at my iPad, I have John, and I call John, I say, hey, hey John, this is, this is Jordan Williams, I'm just getting back to you in regards to blah, 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 insurance you requested, we have you at blank address and, and your age is blank, is that correct? He, he says, yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, most folks would get right into the field day set, right? Meaning like they're gonna set that appointment for the field and find out when they're home and you don't necessarily have to be as concrete once you find out when they're home because they're home you just need to find out when they're home and you knock on the door and you go show up i can't even tell you when i was running uh, in-person appointments they were my favorite appointments to to, to call and go see because i just got them on the phone confirmed the date of birth confirmed the address found out when they're home hey perfect i see you tomorrow at seven and they're like oh now this insurance guy or woman's coming over and we need it they requested it so they're going to be there but if you've ever had a virtual appointment or scheduled some, I'm sure you have forgot that you booked that virtual appointment. And you get like a little reminder, and it's like, reminder, you have an appointment today at blank time, and maybe you're already out, you're having a nice time, and you're like, I'm not going to that appointment. I mean, I want it, I need it, but look, look at where I'm at, I forgot. Everybody makes, everybody makes mistakes, right? I don't know if they made a mistake, though. You as the agent, it's your responsibility of booking that appointment making sure that they show up and there's extra steps that are needed to make sure that they're set there. So let, let's kind of dive into that process. When you get that client on the phone, you need to ask them, have you ever used the virtual meeting app? The same virtual meeting app that teachers and doctors use to connect with their clients and patients, right? Or our students and patients and that's Zoom. Have you ever used that before, Bob and Mary? You need to ask your client when you're on the phone, hey Bob, have you ever used the virtual meeting app Zoom? Same thing teachers and doctors are using to connect with their students and clients? And they say yes or no. Let's say they say no. No worries, Bob, it's, it's real simple. All I do is send you a link and you just have to click on it and my big goofy face will pop up on the screen and it's like we're sitting here at the kitchen table with you. And you walk them through the steps of how they're just gonna be able to receive that link click it, join with audio, join with video, and then y'all are meeting. Let's say they say yes, perfect. What's your email, Bob, so we can send you that link. What you're doing is you're breaking the ice and you're, you're, you're making the guard much more lower on their end because a lot of families, are, they're nervous about doing business virtually, especially our older demographic. They haven't, haven't done it too much. So you want to make it seem like it's, it's what everyone's doing. It's the wave, it's the time, and it's easy. And that's exactly the time that we're in now. We're in a virtual reality. So if you sound like you're nervous about it, or you sound like you're scared, of course they are going to be scared to not show up because they don't know what they're getting into. But people want to do what everyone's doing. So I like to tell my clients, Bob, this is what everyone's doing. I, under, like, I understand it may be new for you. It may be different, maybe a little uncomfortable, but this is to serve you. And that's what you need to emphasize. It's to connect with them faster and safer. They don't have to leave their home. They don't have to put on a face mask. They don't have to worry about sanitizing their house to have you come over. They just have to open up their laptop. Or maybe they don't. They just have to get on, on a phone call and connect with you. But either way, make sure when you're setting that appointment, they understand they just have to click a link. You will text them that link or you will email them the link and they need to know that that's what everyone's doing. Everyone wants to do what everyone's doing. So that's the first part, booking the appointment. Now, where should you be booking the appointment? Well, it's an app that starts with a C as in cat, Calendly Mobile. Whoever created Calendly, I thank you and shout out to you. You created a, a phenomenal, phenomenal product. All Calendly does is make sure that your clients show up and helps organize for you. And organization is key, especially as an insurance agent or broker or financial advisor. Every individual knows in this industry your organization is key. You don't know where your leads are, you don't know where your carrier numbers are, you don't know where your phone number, like it's just a mess. 
So you need to make sure that your appointments is organized. I cannot tell you how many agents I have conversed with in the past that have no organization. And those folks lose money on the table. Calendly is gonna make sure that all your appointments is in one spot. Not only will it make sure of that, when you book the appointment, it automatically sends out a text message and an email with your information to access that meeting. And it will give them reminders and get them to confirm the appointment. So you don't even have to worry about necessarily texting, emailing them to confirm the appointment. Calendly is gonna do that all for you, all right? So you need to use Calendly to book it. Don't put it in your iPad calendar, Google Calendar, Apple Calendar. That's not in their calendar. By it being in Calendly, not only is it in your calendar, but it's in their calendar as well. And if it's in your calendar and not theirs, then it doesn't matter because you're gonna get on Zoom and you're gonna look at yourself for five minutes, scratch your head and leave. All right, so please, 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 if you're serious about this, put them into Calendly. Now, another thing you wanna do is you wanna give them a call the day before and say, hey, Bob, I look forward to putting a face and name and meeting you tomorrow. I don't call to confirm, they already confirmed. I just say I'm looking forward to meeting them. Like, wow, this individual took the time to call me again, say they're looking forward to meeting me and helping me. Now they're more prone to show up because they like you. And people don't do what you do, they do why you do it. So if they believe that you're actually in the business of helping them, and you like what you're doing by the sound and tonality and, and that you're, you're coming forth with, of course they are more likely to show up, which increases your show ratio. You're gonna have to buy more leads working the virtual game because more people will know show you than running the field. So take the necessary steps of, of putting them into Calendly, calling the day before, not to necessarily confirm the appointment because Calendly does that again. Remember, they will either confirm, cancel, or reschedule, but it's just to increase the show, the show ratio and, and make sure that they're actually there and they're serious. Now, once you get on Zoom, you need to be prepared, you need to be organized, and you need to move fast. You don't wanna to build too much rapport. I always open up the camera, my laptop, I say, hey, Bob, nice to put a face to the name. I sent you over all my license information. Did you get that already? They say yes, and regardless if they say yes or not, I show them my license again. I literally show them my license on the screen and the lead card that they filled out. Why? Because that builds credibility. And by building credibility, you build trust. And if you have trust and they trust you, now their, their, their brain is open. They're, they're open to receiving the knowledge. But if you have no credibility, they've never seen your license, they've never seen a website or Instagram page, Facebook, et cetera, they just, hear you setting the appointment and see you now here, they have more questions than answers. So while you're educating them on some phenomenal insurance product, which may or may not be true, their mind is somewhere else. And when you ask them, all right, Bob, so which plan do you want to do today? They're like, oh, oh, oh. they don't know. Because they were thinking the whole time, who the heck are you? And that's an issue. So make sure you build that credibility from the jump and how you do that is by proving yourself. Yes, proving yourself. Hey, Bob, I am a licensed insurance professional through the state of California or state of Massachusetts. Here it is. Here's a link to go verify me. And that's how you want to start your appointment, showing the license, showing the lead card, because now they know you are the correct professional to handle this information. Once, you're, once you go from there, everything else that you run in home from filling out the client worksheet and underwriting and doing a needs analysis and making recommendations, filling out an application, Nothing else changes the fact that you're just not in person with them. What does change though is the preparation beforehand. And you have to make sure that you are more prepared and that you have the proper expectations that you will be investing more money. You will be investing more time and you will be investing more resources overall into the learning, the educating, the presenting, the marketing materials, the serving your clients. But again, it all goes back to serving your clients. So by doing that, and by putting them first and doing all those next extra steps, once you get that blueprint down, then you're like, oh, this is easy. You'll never go back to the field. But folks run away from the virtual because they think it's gonna be the same as the field. And they're not willing to give more to receive more. So if you're not willing to give more, you're not willing to do more in order to achieve and earn more in the virtual world, this is no disrespect. This is to save you time. The virtual world is not for you. You stick over to in-person consulting. But if you were like me, you wanted more. You wanted more for yourself, more for your family, more for others. Then you need to find a way to transition over here. So hopefully this helps if you come across 
If you have any more questions, feel free to hit up anyone here at Family First Life Elite. We'd be happy to help you out. Peace.